Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. This part of the Beltline going west was closed for hours after a serious crash involving a dump truck. Coming up, I'll walk you through everything we know when we first got here. And you're waking up to cloud cover. Look at this thick deck of clouds sitting near the ground. I'll show you when it starts to break up and we'll see some sunshine. With the 32nd pick in the oh. 2024 NFL Draft. Just surprise if you stayed up late to watch the NFL Draft. The Carolina Panthers got an unexpected pick. We'll look at the reaction from the newest player and his family. And spoiler, spoiler alert right there. Uh, they were really happy that he <laughs> got picked. So we'll have more on that story coming up. But thanks for joining us on your Friday. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Chris Loving. Yeah, it was unclear because we didn't think they were going to make their pick last night. Right, and then right. they did. It was kind of cloudy what we were going to think they were going to do. It's a little yeah. cloudy also here locally outside <laughs> the tower cam. That's called a transition. To meet you this Elizabeth Gardner right now, you can see a plenty of cloud coverage over there. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, this deck of clouds is really thick. It's sitting close to the ground. You can see our Mix 101.5 radio tower sticking up above those clouds. But above this thick deck of clouds, we also have some mid and high level clouds. And we're going to need those to also break up along with this uh, deck of low clouds if we're going to see any sunshine. But it is likely we'll see at least a few breaks in the clouds this afternoon. 51 is our temperature. Our wind is out of the northeast at 8 miles per hour. That wind is coming along with a a little bit of moisture, so it's a bit damp, it's a breezy, it's chilly, so I was so much more comfortable in a jacket this morning. It just feels cooler with that damp breeze. Check in future cast. We have cloudy skies all the way up until lunchtime, and then we might see a few breaks in the clouds here and there during the afternoon. There's 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock. A sprinkle or two, also not out of the question, but nothing measurable in our rain gauges. Likely to be cloudy again tomorrow, and then we'll break out of the clouds and see some sunshine for Sunday. We'll likely be cloudy again, as I mentioned, up until around around early afternoon and then a few holes in the clouds. We went back off to 40 to 50 percent of the sky being covered with clouds. 40s and 50s heading out the door. 46 Roxboro, 47 South Hill, 49 in Goldsboro. Elsewhere we're in the low 50s and we have a few gusts out there. The first time we've seen some gusts uh, this morning gusting to almost 20 in the triangle and we have a steady wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the northeast. That's making it feel chilly and we only hit 60 by lunchtime. We'll be in the 60s for most of the afternoon at 5 o'clock. Briefly we hit 70, but a big warm up for part of the weekend. I'll show you when to expect it coming up, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, all new at 802. We're just getting word of a crash that happened in the Zebulon area in the last 10 minutes or so. This one is on Arundel Avenue in the southbound lanes near Dogwood Drive. At this point, we're not picking up any delays on our sensors right now, but definitely look for some police, police activity if you have to navigate that area this morning. Another crash we've been following for the last half hour or so. It appears to be in the clear phases here on Lake Boon Trail in the westbound lanes. Uh, again, look for police activity in that area uh, as you're navigating that, that part of uh, North Raleigh this morning. Uh, elsewhere in the Triangle, look at these drive times in and out of the Bull City. Very, very little to no delays whatsoever. These times are not going to make you late at all whatsoever. Uh, we'll keep you updated here in the WRO Traffic Center. <laughs> A serious crash Friday morning caused the Beltline from Lake Boone Trail all the way down to Wade Avenue to be closed for several hours. Now take a look at this video from the WRAL breaking news tracker. You're going to see a black car with its hazard lights on. We're told a woman driving that car rear-ended a dump truck after the dump truck was trying to leave a construction zone. We're told that woman has very serious injuries. Raleigh police did tell us they don't expect any charges to be filed in this crash. We're going to keep trying to learn more information, and when we have new details, we'll update you. In Raleigh, Nick Perlin, WRL News. Raleigh police are working to make an arrest after two people were hurt in a shooting downtown. Police responded to Haywood Street near Hay Lane. That was about 7.15-ish last night. They learned that two people who had been shot there were taken to the hospital in someone's private car. A man who was shot suffered serious injuries, and a woman who was shot is expected to recover. But there's no word on a possible suspect or even a motive behind this shooting. Just before midnight, the Carolina Panthers gave a plot twist. They traded up and added their newest player with a 32nd and final pick of draft night. With the 32nd pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Xavier Leggett. Wide receiver, South Carolina. 
And that was NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. It's actually Xavier Leggett. <laughs> this was the moment that Leggett and his family learned that he would be the newest Carolina Panther. He gives quarterback Bryce Young another weapon to throw to. The Panthers traded a 33rd overall pick to Buffalo to get him. Imagine you go to the NFL and they butcher your name right there in front of your family. Mm. UNC quarterback Drake May is on his way to New England. The Patriots picked him third overall in the draft. He was one of five quarterbacks taken in the top ten. And it's the first time that has ever happened. Duke's Graham Barton also had his name called in the first round. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers took the offensive lineman with the 26th pick of the draft. Drivers, heads up if you drive on NC42 in the Cleveland community. The bridge over I-40, it's going to be closed all weekend. And when it reopens on Monday morning, it'll be a diverging diamond interchange. This is all part of ongoing work to manage the high volume of traffic at NC42 and I-40. That's also included moving the location of stoplights and adding a median to the highway. The growth in Johnston County has led to traffic congestion in the community. We have an exciting announcement this morning. WREL is proud to partner with Downtown Raleigh Alliance to present Live After Five. It is a free summer concert series. With a focus on celebrating women and music, the four-part summer music series will return to City Plaza, and that will happen on the last Wednesday of each month, May through August. The concerts will feature a mix of local female-led groups who will perform familiar music by Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Blondie, Dolly Parton, and so much more. And the Canes, they're one win away from moving to the next round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. They are now up three games to none in their series with the New York Islanders. After that 3-2 win last night in Game 3, they'll try to finish the sweep in Game 4. That's tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. And the Caniacs are understandably fired up about the team's success so far in the playoffs. And it's not just what's happening on the ice. Fans who talk to WRL at Backyard Bistro say sports betting is giving them a whole new way to enjoy the games. I bet that the third period is going to be the highest winning period, and I bet that Ajo would score a goal. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. And Sebastian Ajo got a goal for the Canes, but bad news for that fan. There were no goals in the third period. Fanatic Sportsbook is the Canes sporting, uh, sports betting partner. A new first-of-its-kind dinosaur exhibit is coming to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Dueling Dinosaurs opens tomorrow. And WRL's Kelsey Coffey is at the museum this morning. Kelsey, there is a lot of excitement over this exhibit. Chris, there is a lot of excitement. You and your family will have an opportunity to experience a live history lesson. This will be the home of the world's first paleontology lab that uh, has open access. So this is a glimpse now at scientists working inside of the Dueling Dinosaurs exhibit. It features the remains of two dinosaurs who were buried together millions of years ago, a tyrannosaur and a triceratops. Over the next four to five years, scientists will carefully unveil the fossils, searching for clues about how those dinosaurs lived and how they died. These animals, the preservation is exquisite. When they died and were buried, they were carcasses. So they had all their flesh on their body, all their organs and skin and muscles. And so every bone in the skeleton is preserved just as it would have been when the animal was alive. Admission is free, but visitors are required to reserve a ticket. So the museum says 10,000 tickets have already been reserved, but admission for tomorrow will be first come, first serve. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News, live in Raleigh. We're getting a closer look at the future of ride hailing. Coming up, Tesla's future plans for you to be able to offer a ride without a driver. Plus, there's a lot to do in the Triangle this weekend, including a fan favorite festival, Brugaloo. We have your out and about best bets, and it's a nice weekend for it, Elizabeth. It, absolutely. We're not looking at rain this weekend, but it is going to be a little on the cool side. Today is chilly right now, and then we'll see 70 this afternoon. A little warmer Saturday, and then 82 for Sunday with lots of sun. I'll show you the pattern change that's going to bring us really warm temperatures next week. Welcome back on your Friday morning. You're looking at a very cloudy white lake this morning. You're watching WRL News available on Hulu and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. It looks like it's going to rain, 
but it's not. It's just going to be really cloudy for the rest of today uh, and this weekend. We're really going to warm up, Elizabeth. By Sunday, our highs are back into the 80s. But we're definitely feeling cool this morning and a little breezy. We have air coming off the Atlantic where it's still cool, so it's a little bit more damp than it was yesterday and a little bit breezier too. Gray in Goldsboro as well as Apex and Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant and of course our newsroom there in Fayetteville. We have a low pressure system that's up into the northeast and that's helping to feed some cool damp air into North Carolina and that's giving us that deck of clouds that we're dealing with this morning. Another warm front back to the west is bringing some showers into western North Carolina and eventually it looks like we have an isolated shower that pops up here during the afternoon but um, we're not going to see much rain. I mean nothing that will be measurable. Here's five o'clock. A few holes in the clouds here and there. Maybe a sprinkle or two um, and uh, you know it's going to stay on the cool side for today. Uh, we need the rain. You know it would be great to have a, a soaker except for the fact that we have so many events happening starting this evening and at least it does look dry for those speaking of dry boy it's been dry for the last several weeks our entire viewing area is under abnormally dry conditions now from the drought monitor this is a calendar of the month of april with the days that we've seen rain and how much we've seen so far we haven't even hit an inch of rain um, at rdu and all of it was the last two weeks for the most part minus just a quarter of an inch so we're running uh, a little over an inch and a half behind when you look at the deficit for the year that's about our deficit for the year as well so it's really been April. Uh, the last two weeks that have been our real problem. We really need to see some more rain. The deficit in Fayetteville is uh, almost two inches. So what we're seeing right now is a flash drought, sort of like a flash flood. It comes all at once. The last two weeks have been very dry with abnormally warm temperatures and our, uh, our land is drying out very quickly. So you may need to start doing some watering if you can. We're dry all the way through Tuesday. Tuesday night we may see an isolated shower, but the dry conditions do make for great festivals, that's for sure. Uh, for Saturday, Bond Park and Cary, we'll see mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the 60s up through lunchtime, but mid-70s during the afternoon with a few peaks of sunshine. Uh, the Courage play the rain at home on Saturday. Temperatures starting at around 70, dropping into the 60s during the game. Again, some clouds, but no rain. Mostly cloudy on Saturday at the Fayetteville Dogwood Festival. Temperature of 77, and then partly cloudy on Sunday, 82. And the Bulls are having their home stand uh, right now. Saturday is Star Wars night, one of my favorite 70 degrees at game time. Sunday is looking bright and beautiful. Tomorrow may be just a little bit cloudy. We had 82 on Sunday, and then highs are in the upper 80s for multiple days next week. I'll show you which days will get us close to records, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, we're just getting word of a crash that happened in the Cary area. This is happening on Cary Town Boulevard in the westbound lanes near Western Boulevard. At this point, we're not picking up any delays on our sensors, but we'll continue to monitor that and let you know exactly what's going on. Also happening now, this crash just popped up on our sensors. Edwards Mill Road in the southbound lane near Ed Drive. This is up around the Rex Hospital complex and all those hospital um, offices up there. So if you have to navigate that area, keep in mind that you probably run into some police activity in that area, but nothing to worry about right now. Uh, we're also working to get more information about this crash. We're told that it is a serious crash on Rock Quarry Road in the eastbound lane near Jones Sausage Road. We're seeing a bit of a backup right there that's happening right now on Rock Quarry Road, but nothing major to speak of. We'll continue to monitor it and keep you posted. Elsewhere around the triangle, look at this in Hillsborough, Durham, Chapel Hill, all the major routes delay free this morning. All right, thank you, Ken. A Durham police officer is in the hospital after being badly hurt in a crash. The two-car crash happened just after 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon at the intersection of Linwood Avenue and South Alston Avenue. The Durham police officer, the department, says the officer was seriously hurt, but he is expected to recover. It's unclear which driver was at fault in the crash or if anyone else was hurt. A person was killed in a shooting in Durham. This began as a crash investigation around yesterday afternoon on Rose Garden Lane. We're showing you video right now from the WREL breaking news tracker. Officers found a car that had run into two other parked vehicles there, and the driver was found dead. This morning, we're hearing what the adoptive mother of two people have been, who have been missing for years told Fayetteville police when she called to report that her son was missing. The 911 call was about Blake Devon. He is now uh, uh, he is now believed to be about 17 years old, and Fayetteville police have been looking for him and his adoptive sister, London Devon. Their adoptive mother, Avante Devon, called police on January 19th, and she told the dispatcher he had been missing for more than a year and that he had gone on a Buddhist retreat. He is part of that. Here's part of that 911 call from our partners at City View. 
I need to file a missing persons report. All right. I was called to call by one one. He told me he was going to a Buddhist retreat and never called back. When did you last see him? I believe when I told you during those holiday times, about a year and a half ago. So what holiday times? Last call it was between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Around twenty twenty three or twenty twenty two. Oh goodness gracious. Twenty twenty two. And that call happened last January. Two months later, Fayetteville police asked for the public's help in finding Blake Devon and his sister London. Earlier this month, police discovered skeletal remains during their search. It'll take months to find out who those remains belong to. The Cumberland County Department of Social Services is requesting an emergency order of protection against Avante Devon on behalf of her ailing 95-year-old mother. Court paperwork shows that Devon is accused of financially exploiting and neglecting her mother. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken just gave a briefing on his talks with Chinese leadership. Blinken spoke from the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. That was not too, too long ago this morning. He talked about effort between China and the U.S. to crack down on fentanyl and closing loopholes in our respective laws that he says drug traffickers are exploiting. Blinken says he, he expressed concerns from the U.S. about China potentially providing weaponry to Ukraine, or rather to Russia, during its war in Ukraine. But he also talked about the U.S. and China set to hold their first artificial intelligence talks, including concerns about the technology. And Russian President Vladimir Putin says he will visit China in May, but he didn't announce a date. The visit would be Putin's first foreign visit to, this, uh, to, the, uh, to China during his new term in office. Two kids in Western North Carolina are happy to have their dirt bikes back. Their mom was able to track them down after they were stolen. Those bikes were found in Raleigh. Surveillance video captured four thieves stealing the bikes from a home in Catawba County. What those thieves did not know, though, was that each of the bikes had an Apple Air tag attached to it. Lindsay Moretz followed them all the way down I-40 to a neighborhood in Raleigh. She called Highway Patrol, who found the bikes in a trailer. Moretz says that she hopes the thieves are found quickly. My husband have worked so hard to provide this life for my children and for them to take the stability and the safety of my home away from my kids disgusts me. It's just awful. So far, no arrests have been made. Authorities are trying to see if this is connected to other thefts in that area. But good on them for having the foresight to use those air tags. An investigation is underway to figure out what caused a fire at a California pier. A massive plume of smoke filled the sky above the iconic Oceanside Pier. That's in San Diego. This happening yesterday afternoon. Multiple firefighting boats were seen shooting water cannons at the structure. Last year, the city of Oceanside spent five and a half million dollars to upgrade aging pipes and electrical systems on the pier. It was first built in 1888, but was destroyed twice since then. Former President Donald Trump's hearing on four additional alleged gag order violations has been moved. It was originally set for next Wednesday, but it will be held on Thursday instead. It's unclear why the hearing needed to be moved. The judge could have agreed to reschedule it because Trump has two campaign events next Wednesday. Tesla is giving us a look into the future where you can call for a ride and a car shows up without a driver. The company says it plans for hailing features to be available in its Tesla app. The ride hailing options could also be a mix between cars owned and operated by Tesla and vehicles that are owned by customers. Tesla says it has invested in making the vehicles autonomous for service, but it's unclear when this feature will actually be available. Okay, I love this story so much. From the Delhi line to the starting line at the Paris Olympics, Dylan Beard is a name to watch this summer. He shocked thousands and even himself when he qualified for the hurdling Olympic trials in June. So Beard lives in Wake Forest and works the Delhi counter at a Walmart. He doesn't have a sponsor, didn't even qualify for the NCAA Outdoor Championship while at Howard University. But aha, he qualified for the trials. His unlikely trip to the Olympic trials is not cheap. So he's funding his training at the at North Carolina State, North Carolina State University in Raleigh by working in the deli at Walmart. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Working real hard out there. Yes.
There are a lot of festivals happening this weekend, too. There are. Let's start with one that's big with beer fans, Brugaloo Festival in Raleigh. The beer festival gets started tonight on Fayetteville Street with a sampling event that's happening from 6 to 10. There will be limited releases of barrel-aged beers and sours, and the main event is happening from uh, tomorrow from noon to 8. More than 100 craft breweries from North Carolina will be there, along with local food trucks and vendors. The Fayetteville Dogwood Festival is happening all weekend if you want to stop by. Things kick off tonight in Festival Park and continues tomorrow and Sunday. There will be live music, food trucks, carnival rides, and more for you to enjoy. And by the way, admission is free. And tomorrow, the town of Cary will host its annual Spring Days Arts and Crafts Festival at Bond Park. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., there will be three stages of entertainment and live music, plus a vendor market featuring more than 170 artists. Admission also free for that one. For more on these events and others happening this weekend, you can head to the, w, the Out and About section on WREL.com. And I really hope people will stop by because there's so many cool artists there, especially like at Artist Alley, and it helps you because, you know, obviously you're supporting local. Makes you feel Exactly. Good. Shop local. I love it's amazing. It. All right, coming up, a big surprise for Carolina Panthers fans. Their late night trade up to secure their newest player during the first round of the NFL draft. Plus, a brand new and first of its kind dinosaur exhibit coming to Raleigh this weekend. How you and your family can get an eyewitness glimpse at an interactive dinosaur fossil exhibit. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Friday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. We'll start with weather. Uh, cloudy skies out there. A little cooler again this morning, but not expecting any rain today. It's interesting because the temperatures are similar to what they were yesterday, but the skies are cloudy. It's breezy and there's a little dampness to the air and it just makes it feel more uncomfortable out there. That was a live look, of course, at uh, Clinton. It's 46 in Lewisburg, 50 in Tarboro, 51 in Irwin, a little sprinkle in Goldsboro, 51 in Rocky Mount. Could see an isolated shower for this afternoon, but the clouds should begin to break up a bit. We're pretty cloudy up through early afternoon, and then uh, we may begin to see just a few holes in the clouds. We're not going to completely clear. Temperature-wise, it's great for exercise. If you're going to be out at lunchtime, 60 degrees. And remember, that's going to be on the cool side. We only hit 70 briefly this afternoon. Ken? Just a handful of crashes dotting our maps this morning, not causing any major delay, except this one right here. We'll keep an eye on that and keep you posted. I do want to tell you about a crash that's, uh, that's happened just in the last half hour or so, and we've been monitoring it since then, trying to get more information about it. It's a serious crash right there on Rock Quarry Road in the eastbound lane uh, near Jones Sausage Road. Up until about five minutes ago, we saw some serious backups there, but from our sensors right now, it appears that things are clearing up in that phase. Uh, we do want to let you know that uh, our major routes, particularly in the Bold City, things are clearing up nicely as we give you a live look at 885 and T.W. Alexander. All right, thanks, Ken. Raleigh police are working to make an arrest after two people were hurt in a downtown shooting. Police responded to Haywood Street near Hay Lane around 715 last night. They learned that two people were shot and taken to the hospital. We are working to find out if police have any information on a suspect. And next on Fox 50, what we know about a crash that sent someone to the hospital and closed the belt line. And next on today, men sharing their stories to help others who are impacted by male infertility. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Right now on Fox 50, one person is seriously hurt after a crash closed down part of I-440 in just a bit. We'll take you a closer look at what happened in the WRL breaking news tracker. Gray, breezy and cool this morning, but I'll show you some changes that are starting right now and when we can see some sunshine later today. A new one of a kind dinosaur exhibit is coming to Raleigh this weekend. Coming up, how you and your family can experience history coming to life. Your time is 8.30 this morning. Wake up, stretch, get a cup of coffee, and join <laughs> us here on WRL News on Fox 50. I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Yes, yeah, starting off another cool morning, uh, much like yesterday. A lot of clouds in the sky you can see over Dix Park. Uh, that's going to be the story for much of today and tomorrow. Uh, but Elizabeth, Sunday, we're warming up. 
Finally, Sunday will live up to its name. We'll see some sunshine and some warmer temperatures. Check this out. If you happen to be watching just about 15 or 20 minutes ago, uh, we had a thick deck of clouds that was covering uh, the ground. We couldn't see the ground at all here. So we started to see that dissipate. Now we still have some mid-level clouds that we're dealing with. So the sun isn't coming out just yet, but we've uh, gotten rid of at least this one layer of clouds right here in Wake County. So um, that's certainly a sign that we'll have the potential for some clearing later this afternoon. 51 is our current temperature. We have wind out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. That wind is coming right off the North Atlantic, so it is on the cool side and a bit uh, more damp than yesterday, and that's what's giving us enough moisture for the cloud cover to form this morning. So we'll move it on out to lunchtime. We're still pretty gray, but during the afternoon, there could be a few holes in the clouds. We're not going to completely clear out. It's not going to be that beautiful blue sky that we saw yesterday, but a few peaks of sunshine on and off and possibly even a sprinkle. No measurable rain, but there could be just a sprinkle here or there. We check out the uh, cloud cover, and of course, we're completely covered in clouds now, but through the afternoon, those clouds begin to dissipate. So maybe a, a 40 to 50% coverage of the sky later on this afternoon. Some 40s out there still, 49 Goldsboro, 48 South Hill, elsewhere looking at low 50s. And of course that breeze makes it feel pretty cool. Five to 10 miles per hour out of the Northeast does feel chilly. It'll be a cool lunchtime, just 60 degrees. We climb to 70 this afternoon and then warming as we get through the weekend. I'll show you when we'll see temperatures near records. Coming up, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, happening now, we just got uh, word of a crash that happened just on, it looks like it's be on Highway 70. I mean, as I was walking out here uh, for the last couple of minutes, uh, that crash popped onto our sensors. Give me about a few minutes, I'll let you know exactly what's going on. But for the most part, it doesn't appear that it's causing any major delays in that area. We can monitoring it for you. Another crash that uh, has been a troubled spot this morning here that's happened on Rock Quarry Road in the eastbound lanes there, Jones Sausage Road. We're picking up some uh, big tapping going on there on Rock Quarry Road, but nothing major to speak of. But we'll keep monitoring it here in the W area traffic center as well. Taking a look at these drive times in and out of the Bull City, all the major routes are clear this morning. Just about one minute coming in from Hillsborough on 85. Uh, similarly, I-40, no delays whatsoever. Of course, if anything pops up, we'll keep you updated here in the W area traffic center. <laughs> A serious crash Friday morning caused the Beltline from Lake Boone Trail all the way down to Wade Avenue to be closed for several hours. Now take a look at this video from the WRAL breaking news tracker. You're going to see a black car with its hazard lights on. We're told a woman driving that car rear-ended a dump truck after the dump truck was trying to leave a construction zone. We're told that woman has very serious injuries. Raleigh police did tell us they don't expect any charges to be filed in this crash. We're going to keep trying to learn more information, and when we have new details, we'll update you. In Raleigh, Nick Perlin, WRL News. And Jeff Hogan in the WR Live Center. We continue to follow some information coming out of Dunn. Now, we checked with Harnett County Sheriff's Office. They said the city of Dunn Police Department is handling an investigation right now. I'm going to show you on the map right where uh, we're talking about here, where a call came in earlier today. And uh, the information we have is very limited right now. It came in as a disturbance call. But then we got some radio traffic that we've been listening to that indicates uh, possibly a person was shot at the scene there uh, in the 900 block of Magnolia Avenue. I want you to hear what this sounded like coming in. North Magnolia caller calling from 1003 North Magnolia. Repeating caller calling from 1003 North Magnolia. Stated that there's a female yelling for help. After hearing a gunshot, gathering further. Caller now arrived by her neighbor at 906, possibly has been shot. No further this time. I see you hear what that sounded like. We're trying to figure out uh, some more information on this. Details have been limited so far. That call came in from a block away. Uh, potentially a neighbor involved in this is what the caller was trying to say and uh, heard a female uh, yelling for help and heard a gunshot there. So we'll continue to follow this um, and get you more information as soon as it comes into the live center. All right, thanks, Jeff. And Raleigh police working to make an arrest after two people were hurt in a shooting downtown. Police responded to Haywood Street near Hay Lane last night around 715. They learned that two people were shot and taken to the hospital in someone's car. The man has serious injuries. A woman is expected to be OK. We are working to find out if police have any information on the shooter. Just before midnight, the Carolina Panthers gave us a big surprise to end the first round of the NFL draft. They traded up and added their newest player with the 32nd and final pick of the night. With the 32nd pick in the 2024 NFL draft, 
the Carolina Panthers select Xavier Leggett, wide receiver, South Carolina. That was NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell with a uh, bit of a tough time pronouncing the right name there, Xavier Leggett. This was the moment that Leggett and his family learned that he would be the newest Carolina Panther. He gives quarterback Bryce Young another weapon to throw to. The Panthers traded the 33rd overall pick to Buffalo just to get him. UNC quarterback Drake May on his way to New England. The Patriots picked him third overall in the draft. He was one of five quarterbacks taken in the top ten. It's the first time that has ever happened. And Durham students are getting out of school two hours early today. The school district says it's for a wellness day. The Durham school system started offering wellness days last year as a way to take some stress off students. Big news if you drive on NC42 in the Cleveland community. The bridge over I-40 will be closed all weekend. Now, it's uh, going to reopen Monday morning, and it'll be a diverging diamond interchange when it does. This is part of ongoing work to manage the high volume to traffic at NC42 and I-40. That's also included more the, moving the location of stoplights and adding a median to the highway. The growth in Johnston County has led to traffic congestion in that community. The Carolina Hurricanes now just one game away from moving on in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Canes beat the New York Islanders last night in Game 3 on Long Island 3-2. to two. They now have a three games to none lead in the series. They'll try to close it out in Game 4 tomorrow afternoon at 2. Today, former National Enquirer CEO David Pecker will be on the stand for a fourth day in former President Donald Trump's criminal trial. Pecker testified on Thursday about the deal with adult film star Stormy Daniels and how his company worked with politicians to buy and bury stories. Trump's attorneys started their cross-examination late Thursday and will continue today. The U.S. Supreme Court is weighing a question that will decide Trump's legal fate. They heard nearly three hours of arguments on the extent of his presidential immunity yesterday. The justices have to determine whether Trump can be charged with a crime for allegedly trying to overturn the 2020 election. Trump's defense team claims that presidential rights protect him from crimes. The government's lawyers argue that presidents are not above the law. A Lee County man accused of trying to buy a nine-year-old girl is in jail this morning. 50-year-old Joseph Yu is charged with human trafficking and prostitution of a minor. Yu appeared before a judge and was issued no bond. And the investigation into this, it's still going. You and your family can see the work paleontologists do every day. A new dueling dinosaur exhibit is coming to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. And WRL's Kelsey Coffee explains the new exhibit opens tomorrow and gives a once-of-a-kind opportunity. You and your family will have a chance to experience a live history lesson starting this weekend. Behind this window is the world's first open access paleontology lab. This is a glimpse at scientists working inside the new dueling dinosaurs exhibit. It features the remains of two dinosaurs who were buried together millions of years ago, a tyrannosaur and a triceratops. Over the next four to five years, scientists will carefully unveil the fossils, searching for clues about how those dinosaurs lived and how they died. These animals, the preservation is exquisite. When they died and were buried, they were carcasses. So they had all their flesh on their body, all their organs and skin and muscles. And so every bone in the skeleton is preserved just as it would have been when the animal was alive. Admission is free, but visitors are required to have a ticket. So the museum says they have 10,000 tickets already reserved. But if you're coming tomorrow, those tickets are first come, first serve. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. A non-alcoholic bar in Raleigh is closing its doors this weekend, but you have a few more opportunities to say cheers before they close. We have the new plans. Plus, the real Slim, Slim Shady is no more. I cannot say that five times fast. Eminem announced a new album that will put to rest his alter ego. How he used the NFL draft to make that big announcement. And it's a cool morning as you take a li live look over Fenton and Cary this morning. Elizabeth Gardner shares the weekend forecast and when you can expect a warm up. Time is 843 and people are already out there hitting the links and down in Pinehurst on a pretty nice uh, morning as you wake up. A little chilly in some places. 
Thanks for watching WREL News, available on Spectrum and the WREL app on your TV or streaming device. Maybe not chilly, I don't know, but I definitely know I needed a jacket walking out the house this morning, Elizabeth. I was so happy to have my jacket. I zipped it up before I got in the door. I, I was so chilly. Um, it's partially because of the wind. We have winds that are around 5 to 10, but out of the northeast, which has just a little nip to it and even a little moisture associated with it. It's a little damp out there this morning. Check this out, though. This is a live look at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. And yes, in fact, that is a little bit of blue starting to peek through the clouds ahead of schedule. I don't think we're going to complain about that. It did look like we would have some breaks in the clouds this afternoon, but here we are at 845. 51 degrees, but a northeast wind at 10, and we will see some breezy conditions for today. And with that northeast wind, it will feel cool. Only 60 degrees at lunchtime. We'll climb into the upper 60s to around 70 this afternoon. Here's Futurecast, and we'll roll it on out to lunchtime. Futurecast still showing a good bit of cloud cover, but some breaks in the clouds. A few breaks during the afternoon, some sun here and there. Also, the potential for an isolated shower, quick little sprinkle, um, not enough to really be too concerned about, but again, the potential for a, a little sprinkle, especially late this afternoon and this evening. We're mostly cloudy right now. We'll see the coverage of clouds uh, diminishing as we get through the day, so a bit more sunshine, increasing sunshine. Uh, but our winds are going to stay out of the northeast today, so that's going to keep things cool. Uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour steady, and some gusts maybe up to 15 miles per hour. Last time we looked at the wind gusts, we were at almost 20 in the triangle. Still 48 in, Rox in Roxborough, but elsewhere temperatures are in the low 50s. It's going to be a slow warm up with that wind coming right off the North Atlantic directly across North Carolina. We're going to have a tough time warming up much. So 70 in Raleigh, 68 in Durham, and 74 in Fayetteville. If you're headed out to Brugaloo, uh, there might be a quick sprinkle, but you know, it's, it's not going to be terrible out there. You know, throw on a jacket, a sweatshirt. Temperatures will be in the 60s and will be mostly cloudy. Our cooler temperatures are on their way out. The blue is where temperatures are below normal. We still see that through tomorrow. And then by Sunday, the warm air starts to push in, signified by the yellow and the orange color contours. That's going to be with us for much of next week. And it's going to be just downright hot. 75 is our normal high. We climb to 82 Sunday, and then we're in the upper 80s on Monday and Tuesday. That's going to put us more than 10 degrees above normal and close to records. Monday, 87, the record's 91. 88 on Tuesday, and the record's 90. So we're close to it. One degree warmer Wednesday, but the record's 92. So we're probably going to be just out of reach of the records, which is fine. We have plenty of time for our temperatures to be hot. We have yet to hit 90 degrees um, this year at RDU. We might do it on Wednesday. We are dry. The only chance for rain this coming week is late on Tuesday. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. As more arrests are made during protests at college campuses across the country, some students won't be able to walk the stage. School officials at the University of Southern California decided to cancel commencement because of safety concerns. Students at Columbia University in New York say they fear the same thing will happen at their school. At Columbia, the university says they're making progress in negotiations with protesters to take down their encampment. You can see it right there on your screen. The protests at Columbia have led to dozens of arrests there and at campuses across the country as police clash with protesters. Kyle Rittenhouse was met with protests during a public speaking event on the campus of Clemson University. Rittenhouse was visiting Clemson as part of a national campus gun rights tour. He was found not guilty of killing two people during a, pro a protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin back in 2020. Protesters eventually made their way into the auditorium where he was speaking with students and began chanting while others sat waiting for the event to start. Police were called in to remove those protesters. No arrests were made. We've learned that Jalen Sorrells will be allowed to walk across the stage with his brother at Orange High School in June. We introduced you to Jalen earlier this week. The Orange County School System originally said that he couldn't participate in the ceremony. That's because he was enrolled at the Partnership Academy. Well, they have since changed that decision. Jalen's mother shared the good news with WREL. I'm glad that this is over. I didn't want it to go this far, um, but I, I told Jalen I would do whatever it takes um to get him to walk across that stage and that's yeah you know, i promised him that and that's what i did and she is ecstatic about this she thanked our viewers and the community for their overwhelming support for her son and Jalen plans to play football at mars hill university after graduating from high school june 7th
Next week, a judge will decide if outside experts can finally get into Poe Hall. This comes as NC State is accused of tampering with evidence inside the building. The building has been closed since November after cancer-causing chemicals called PCBs were found inside. A petition filed by a former student, Dr. Darren Maysher, claims that there is reason to believe that evidence inside Poe Hall may have been destroyed or altered by NC State. Only five on your side was in court as Macer's attorneys asked a judge to give them access to the building to investigate. If outside experts are allowed inside, they will collect their own evidence and samples. The Durham School Board is moving forward with a new pay schedule for classified staff in the next school year. Employees who have been rallying for months say they are cautiously optimistic. The school board voted last night to approve a budget that includes at least 11 percent raises from last school year's pay. Those raises could be more if it brings pay up to market rate. The president of the Durham Association of Educators says that this is a move in the right direction. It really reflects that people understand that public education is in a real crisis right now and we need to make big, bold actions in order to fix this like staffing exodus that we're facing. The county and the state still need to adopt their budgets before the plan is finalized and that won't happen until around October. Avery Slatcher's recovery after being stabbed at a Moore County High School a year ago this week, it's been a long one. After she was stabbed on April 28th of 2023, she needed nearly 30 units of blood as doctors worked to save her life. Today, people in Moore County will give back with a blood drive in her honor. That drive is happening at Red's Corner on South Broad Street in Southern Pines. It's from 2 to 8. Everyone who gives blood will get a $20 gift card. You have two final opportunities to get a non-alcoholic drink from Umbrella Dry Bar before it closes its doors. You can stop by the bar on Martin Street today from 5 to 10 p.m. for one last toast in Raleigh. Umbrella Dry Bar will also be at Brugaloo this weekend. You can get a non-alcoholic drink during the festival from 3 to 7 tomorrow. After this weekend, the owners plan to keep their business, but they're going to run it as a pop-up bar. Eminem's appearance at the NFL Draft was just the start of a big night for him. The Detroit rapper opened the show and then made an announcement of his own. Shortly after he came out on stage to hype up the crowd in his hometown, he released a teaser video for the new album, and it's called The Death of Slim Shady. It's due to come out this summer. And today in entertainment news, a different rapper cancels his tour and a first look at two upcoming movies. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. All kinds of messed up stuff happened when they were making movies like The Omen or The Exorcist. And the guy your dad replaced? Everything's cursed. Russell Crowe plays an actor who starts to unravel while making a supernatural horror film in The Exorcism. Is he falling back into his past addictions or does he need a real exorcism? Ryan Simpkins and David Hyde Pierce also star The Exorcism Haunts Theaters beginning June 7th. Kid Cudi has canceled his tour after breaking his foot jumping off the stage at Coachella. The rapper posted on social media he was heading into surgery, ticket buyers would get full refunds, and he'd have new tour dates as soon as possible. Creative professionals lured to Indonesia on the promise of work from major Hollywood figures. There were actors, photographers, makeup artists, literally hundreds and hundreds of victims from all around the world. But it was all a scam. Here's your first look at Hollywood Con Queen about the mysterious figure who impersonated Tinseltown's most powerful women and the journalist and the private investigator who worked to track her down. The three-part documentary series Hollywood Con Queen debuts May 8th on Apple TV+. That was David Daniel reporting. That's a real tease there, right? Today you can score a salty snack in honor of National Pretzel Day. At Auntie Anne's, you can get a free original or cinnamon sugar pretzel for its reward program members. At Pretzel Maker, all customers can get a free small order or pretzel bites. You can also get deals on online pretzel orders. Eastern Standard Provisions is offering half off its Pretzel Lovers Pack. And Milwaukee Pretzel Company has 30% off all orders. Mm, Auntie Anne's, if you smell it in the mall, you have to get it. <laughs> I love it. 
All right, well, the World War II veteran is embracing a major milestone. Alan Gagnon just turned 100 years old, and family and friends held a birthday celebration for him in Maine yesterday. He grew up in Maine on a potato farm before joining the Army to fight in World War II. He worked as a minesweeper in Sicily and North Africa and served as a staff sergeant. After the war, he got married and had three daughters. He said he's looking forward to being 200. So happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to him. And hey, before we go to break, here are the winning lottery numbers, and we're going to get another check on weather and traffic. That's next.